Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to talk about speech recognition, okay, which is a topic that I'm fascinated about it. Uh, so let's start by reading and we're going to give you guys my take on speech recognition. Okay, So speech recognition is an interdisciplinary subfield of computational linguistics that develops methodologies and technology that enables the recognition and translation of spoken language into text by computers. So the idea behind speech recognition is to listen, is to be able to listen to human speech and translate that into words. Okay, so uh, this has a lot of applications such as virtual assistants or accessibility and other very important stuff. Okay, so but it is a very difficult task to accomplish. Okay, so. Uh, it is also known as Automatic Speech Recognition, ASR, Computer Speech Recognition, or Speech to Text, STT. It incorporates knowledge and research in the linguistics, computer science, and electrical engineering fields. So the article on the Wikipedia has a lot of information. It says that in the 1952, three Bell Labs researchers built a system for single speech digit recognition. So, as you guys can see, digit recognition with a task that it can be easily accomplished today uh, started almost 60 years ago. Actually, more than 60 years ago. Uh, so, but uh, there are a lot of information. As you guys can see right here, uh, we have um, about D DTW, this is a, which is an algorithm. Um, so, uh, okay, in 1971, DARPA funded five years of research, speech recognition research, though, through its speech re understanding research program with ambitious and, and goals including minimal vocabulary size of 1,000 words. It was thought that speech understanding would be a to would be key to making programming speech recognition, although they later proved not to be true. So yeah, there that is DARPA is one of the institutions behind speech recognition research. Um there is also CMU, which we're gonna talk later, because CMU is actually the research group that had some progress on speech recognition. We're gonna talk about this later. Uh, and uh, during this late 1960, Leonard Baum developed the mathematics of Markov chains at the Institute of Defense Analysis. A decade later, at M MC, okay, I'm have trouble. CMU, which is not Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, that's off topic. Reg Red students James Baker and Janet. M. Baker began using the hidden Markov model H HMM for speech recognition. So, this hidden Markov model algorithm is the basis of speech recognition. Okay, a lot of systems use this, um, and they are like the systems that were developed in the 1990s. Okay, uh, so uh, okay, we have practical speech recognition. Uh, the 1990s saw the first introduction of commercially successful speech recognition technology. Two of the earliest products were Dragon Dictate, a consumer product released in the 1990 inertia pr price at, oh my god, $9,000? That's, is it $9,000? Damn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's very, this is very overpriced. Oh my god. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. This is the part that I was talk. I, I was like to talk about, which is okay. So the technology was developed developed by Lawrence Rebner and others at Bell Labs. By this point, the vocabulary of the typical conventional speech recognition system was larger than the average human vocabulary. So the idea was that the computer could recognize more words than a human, which was great. Raj Reddy's former student Zhu Zhu Dong Hyung developed this Phoenix 2 system at CMU. This Phoenix 2 system was the first to do speaker independent, which means that 
uh, it can recognize from multiple people, not only one people, okay? Large vocabulary, continuous speech recognition, which is great, because we are going to talk about this later. And it had the best performance in Dar Darpa's 19 1992 evaluation handling continuous speech with a large vocabulary was a major milestone in the history of speech recognition. Yeah, because the computer has to be very fast and the algorithm needs to be very good to be able to recognize at a large vocabulary. Um, and let's see, Jung went on to, to be found the, the speech recognition group at Microsoft in 1993. Red Reds, uh, Reds students carefully joined Apple where in 1992, he helped develop the speech interface prototype for the Apple computer known as Casper, which I didn't know about this. Okay, so learn out in how this this name is very familiar to me because if you guys remember, Sap3, which is a speech synthesis technology, there is a package which which has this name, Leonard, Leonard, I guess. A Belgian based speech recognition company. Um, yeah, there's, there is a lot of information right here. Um, in the 200s, 2000s, I, I actually, DARPA sponsored two speech recognition programs effective, affordable, reusable speech to text ears in 2002 and global autonomous language exploration, exploitation, actually. Gal, for four teams participated in the EARS program, IBM, a team led by BBN with LIMS and Uni University of Pittsburgh, Cambridge University, and a team composed by ICI, SRI, and University of Washington. EARS funded funded the collection of switchboard telephone speech corpus containing 260 hours hours of recorded conversation from over 500 speakers so this is this it is talking about how many data is needed to train a system like this okay and you guys you will see that speech recognition is a very complicated task and i'm going to talk about this later so uh, let's talk about modern systems, okay? So, in the early 2000s, uh, speech recognition was still dominated by traditional approaches such as hidden Markov models combined with fit for artificial ne networks, which is great. Today, however, many aspects of speech recognition has been taken over by a deep learning method called long short term memory, LSTM, a recurrent neural network published by Seth Hochrader. Yes, in George Jurgen Smith Smith Huber in 1997, LSTM RNNs are avoid the vanish gradient problem and can learn very deep learning tasks. So this is deep learning, guys. You guys will learn about deep learning later on on this channel. So just keep in mind that we're gonna talk about this a, a lot. So just uh, chill and listen what I had to say. So the required remembers of events that what happened thousands of discrete time steps ago, which is important was voice speech. Around two, 2007, LSTM trained by connectionist temporal classification to CTC, which is a um, classifier uh, for uh, speech recognition. There are a lot of papers that's, that talk about this and you guys will see uh, more about this later. So, started to outperform traditional speech recognition in certain applications. In 2015, Google's speech recognition reportedly experienced a dramatic performance jumps of 49% through, though, actually through, CTC trained LSCM, which is now available though Google Voice to all smartphone users. So, uh, Google is, is actually using this for a while. They started using the traditional approach, which was with uh, hidden Markov models, and now they are using deep learning. And they are the company that uh, created TensorFlow, which is a deep learning framework. Okay, so they are they have interest in this area as well. 
for various reasons. So uh, the use of deep feed feed forward non-recurrent networks for acoustic modeling was introduced in later part of a 2009 by Geoffrey, Geoffrey Hidden, which is the father of deep learning uh, and his student at the University of Toronto and Li Deng and colleagues at Microsoft Research. As you guys can see, they had a lot of information right here. I'm not I'm not going to read all of this. If you guys want to learn about this, I recommend that you guys read the article on Rick Peter. It has a lot of information. You guys should check that out. And I'm going to finish right here. But in the next video, I'm going to talk about speech recognition in more detail. Okay, so thank you guys for watching this video. See you guys next time.